I mentioned earlier oxygen sensors, and a gentleman called with his automobile and, and had an O2 sensor problem. And so uh, Bosch, an automotive leader, and by the way, we've been an, an authorized Bosch service center at Car Clinic Service since 1986. We were the first in the state of Florida and the eighth in the nation. So uh, Bosch has led the industry since the beginnings of automobile, developed the very first O2 sensor in the 70s to help control automotive emissions. And oxygen sensors are precision devices that, as I said, measure oxygen levels in the exhaust and tell the vehicle's engine management system if the engine's running too rich, that's too much fuel. In a racing vernacular, we call that fat. If it's too fat, it's too rich. Or too lean, that's too much, too little fuel. So uh, vehicles built after 96, as I just mentioned with the last caller, have at least two oxygen sensors, and some have as many as four. The additional sensors monitor the catalytic converter. So you got a sensor before the cat and one after. Depending on the vehicle's design, today's vehicles rely on one or more of the four following different types of sensors. This is important because you're always going to hear about O2 sensors. So this is the inside scoop and the reality of sensors. The basic thimble sensor, which you know, the business end looks like a thimble, only a few motorcycles and off-road applications still use these. The heated thimble sensor uses a tiny internal heater and sends readings faster. And then the heated planner, this is a P-L-A-N-A-R sensor, uh, which warms up and sends readings almost instantaneously. Accounts for about 50% of all the sensors in today's cars. And then there's the highly sophisticated wideband sensor, which sends readings in various degrees, in varying degrees from rich or lean, rather than simply rich or lean. So it, 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 it has a ramp, a ramp scale. And O2 sensors operate under severe conditions for as you know, tens of thousands of miles, and when they wear out, your vehicle will set a fault code, and it'll also fail an emissions test. MPG will be dropped, and so will performance. So the, the challenge is, you may not have a bad sensor, you could have a slow sensor. And a slow oxygen sensor really doesn't always turn the check engine light on. We've talked about this on previous programs. That's what's called a lazy O2 sensor, but you still could have hard engine starts, sluggish performance, and the pinch at the pump, poor MPG. Regardless, when the replacement is needed, you'll optimize the performance and you'll get better emissions and proper emissions control by using a quality O2 sensor. I chose Bosch. I recommend Bosch.